Hello and welcome to Wizards, Worries and Words, a fantasy writing advice podcast. Uh, my name is Jed, author of The Thunder Heist, and I'm joined by my only other co-host for today, Michael R. Fletcher. Hey, that's me, and I am here, and the others aren't. Fuckers. Welcome to a very special Jed and Mike episode. Um, <laughs> I believe we're going to be talking about launch stuff. Uh, yeah, so essentially, I, I just had a game release uh, recently called Siege of Trebolin, and uh, before we were recording off-air, Mike was just saying how he basically... Everywhere he was looking online, he would just be seeing mentions of the game. So thought we could maybe just uh, yeah, run through a few questions about how that launch was structured um, and our differing approaches to that uh, over the years. So uh, yeah, Mike, do you have any particular questions to kind of start us off? Uh, I, guess, I guess first, like how did you manage to uh, time reviewers? Were you, did you uh, go out of your way to actually ask them for a specific date to drop reviewers? I know my approach is different. I tend to be like, do the review, drop it whenever it's convenient to you. Uh, reviews coming out before the book, or in your case, game is available, that's nice uh, because it builds hype. Uh, reviews around release day, that's nice because it's sort of, that's momentum. Reviews happening after release day are still awesome because that reminds people that there's a book that they really need to buy. Yeah, there's no... I definitely think there's no wrong approach with that. Like, as you say, pretty much any time the review comes out, it's going to be useful. Um, with Siege of Treblin, the publisher discounted, discounted it during launch week. So it was down from like uh, $5.99 usually to $3.99 during launch week. So I kind of used that as a bit of an incentive to make sure the reviewers were aligning it then. Mm -hmm. I basically told them in my email... Um, the game comes out on this date and during this week it's going to be discounted so ideally if you could mention or drop your review at the start of that launch week it'll be really good for your audience because then if they want to uh, play the game they can get it for a cheaper price so yeah. kind of framing it in those terms um, the reason why I really wanted to concentrate the launch reviews in that period because I was probably reaching out to these reviewers maybe a month or so before the actual game came out um yeah the reason i wanted to concentrate it in that period was because you can't really do pre-orders with this game um right. like you can pre-order on steam but it, most people don't get it on there um so basically i just wanted to make sure that like if someone was watching a review of this they could immediately go and start reading the game without having to like wait a couple of weeks whereas with a book i feel like there is some benefit to like having a bit of hype going up to the launch um, on Amazon, you know, you can set up pre-orders and that sort of thing. But yeah, I just really wanted to concentrate it because yeah, in the past I have, I have sent books to reviewers and been like, just drop a review whenever you want. And I've gotten reviews like half a year later. <laughs> so that's fine as well. Cause like it does, it still helps sales and it's still good to get the word out there. Um, but I think there's a lot of benefit to just like concentrating all your marketing efforts. And I remember talking to I think it was like Ken Craigle a while ago. He was like the guy who um, back in like the 80s when there was like the Feed the World concerts and stuff. I'm not sure if I'm getting all the names right, but he was basically talking about how, because um, at these concerts, he would basically bring together like the 20 biggest musicians in the world and have them perform, you know, on one day. He was talking about how with marketing, his approach has always been to like take all the efforts that you would put out over the course of a year and mm -hmm. condense it into one day and you'll have way more firepower and you'll make way more of an impact. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely seemed to work in, in this instance. Yeah, yeah, cool. So you, you, did you already have um, like contacts in the game reviewing com uh, in, uh, com uh, community or were Not you sort of cold, cold calling folks? And, Cause that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember when um, I was like trying to get reviews for my first book, Fires of the Dead, like about two years ago, I probably emailed about 70 different book reviewers and maybe five of them said yes. <laughs> so like it's, it's harsh when you're starting out, but as I've released each subsequent book, the ratio has become better and better. And in this case, I wasn't reaching out to uh, like game reviewers specifically. I was just reaching out to people who uh, had either like reviewed some of my stuff in the past. Um, so there were like a, a few YouTubers who fit into that category or like the other tactic I did was I 
went onto my Twitter account. I looked through all the people who were following me and anyone who had like reviewer in their bio, I kind of like stalked them a little bit online. And um, <laughs> the benefit of doing that is like when you reach out to someone who is already kind of aware of you, yeah. it's not just like an absolute cold contact. It's sort of like, a creepy warm contact instead, which is slightly better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I did that and I probably reached out to about 17 different reviewers and 15 of them reviewed it. So the ratio was way, way a bit better this time. Hmm. I think this podcast helped a lot because quite a few of the people I was reaching out to who I'd just seen like following me on Twitter or whatever, immediately responded and went, oh my gosh, I listen to you on your podcast like every Monday. I'd love to have a look at this game or whatever. So that was kind of super yeah. weird, but also good. It, it is crazy. It, yeah. It's still, it is strange that people actually listen to this. I, it's I bizarre. Very, very it's weird. Bizarre. Yeah. yeah, like I'm glad you're not used to it either because yeah, it's, it's kind of startling to me as well. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, that was the main thing. It was just like reaching out to book reviewers that I already knew. I had a... Um, sort of like a, a big spreadsheet set up where I just went through the Twitter, listed down all the people who might potentially be book reviewers, looked at their followings, made sure that it was decent enough that it was worthwhile reaching out to them. Um, and then, yeah, just like, just sent out an email. Uh, basically, yeah, just trying to keep it brief. Um, I think the fact that this was like sort of a bit of a different thing that wasn't a book definitely helped because a mm -hmm. lot of people were like, oh, this is so cool. I've never heard of like, this interactive fiction game medium before, um, or, you know, they, they'd played original text adventure games back in the day, but had not actually uh, experimented with this kind of newer format. So yeah, like in terms of getting reviewers, it was, it was very easy for, for this game, which was really nice and definitely not been the experience with uh, the <laughs> earlier books. Yeah, no, I remember the same thing uh, with like my first book with 88, uh, you know, pre Beyond Redemption days. Uh, didn't know anybody. I think I created my Facebook and Twitter accounts specifically to market 88 because I wasn't previous. I wasn't on social media at all prior to that. Sure. And uh, wow, did that go badly? <laughs> like, no, yeah. Nobody, why? Nobody'd heard of me. Nobody wanted the book. You know. Yeah. It's it's impossible. Yeah, I think like the biggest thing if, if you're listening to this right now and you are in that phase of um, you know, it's your first book coming out and you don't have any contacts or anything. Would you like advise someone in that position to almost like not worry about it that much? Or do you think you just have to kind of go for it anyway? Because yeah, I, I think you got to do the slog. Reviews. You, uh, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's your first step, I guess. Right. So you, yeah. you, you have to reach out, you have to offer it. Um, and what I always do when I'm uh, asking people if they want ARCs, uh, advanced review copies, is I'm always very clear um, that there is no pressure. So yes, when I reach important. out, uh, I'm like, I, you know, can I offer you this book? Um, release date, date is X. Um, you know, if you don't get to it, no problem. If you get to it after the release, no problem. You will never hear from me. I will never pester you. And mm. I'm like super clear about that. It's zero stress. And that more people are likely to take it because they're yeah. like, all right, he's not going to you know, come back and like bug me because re reviewers don't want to get stressed out or feel guilty about that shit, right? That, that doesn't help anyone. And, and that's the other side is you then have to not pester them. Like send out anyone who will take one, just send it. And then never, ever, ever bug them. Yeah. Like just even if, about even if somebody swears up and down on their mother's grave that they're going to give you a review, don't bug them. Don't reach out yeah. and go, Hey, you know what's going on? <laughs> just checking in. It's like, no, don't just fucking check in. Stay no, the fuck out. Just stay quiet. Yeah. Uh, uh, I couldn't agree more. That is yeah. hugely important. But yeah, sorry. I, I sidetracked myself. It's the first step. And mm. when you're later shopping your second book or, or trying to get reviews for your second book, because you're a junkie now and you can't stop. Um, <laughs> some of them are going to remember your name. And hopefully during, you know, in the interim, uh, between them ignoring your first, first book and now that they're going to ignore your second book, um, hopefully you have been around and on social media and taking part in the community the entire time. So 
they'll recognize your name from having previously sent them arcs or, you know, pestered them about arcs. You'll have been, you know, interacting in the community. Uh, more people are going to say yes. And th- that's why you just do it, even though you're going to fail the first time. Mm. You just do it because that's your, you have to take that first step. Uh, and that's what it is. And as you and say, by book, well, 12, it's yeah, different. Yeah, book 12, book 12. Yeah. Book 12. Like you hope it, it's starting to go a bit better at that stage. Um, but yeah, I think you definitely bring up a good point there of like a lot of them are probably going to ignore your email the first time around, but even the fact that they are seeing your name in their inbox can be useful a few months down the line when they happen to stumble across the book on Amazon and they're like, Oh, this seems familiar to me. Or as you say, when you're launching another book, um, because yeah, it makes them feel like they uh, were sort of, you know, in on the ground floor at this yep. exclusive club that is your author career. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a bit of a stretch but yeah I think it's just as you say important to get your name out there and the other thing as well was like if you are in that early stage and you know you've got a book that you're going to release in about a year or so I would seriously consider is there anything that I can be creating now that will like separate me a bit from just an author who has no social media presence um, you know no like real online reputation uh, whether that is like a podcast whether that is your own book reviews. Um, you obviously want to remain focused on writing as the main thing, but I think there is also, as I've discovered from doing this show, like huge benefits to putting things out there that are beneficial to the fantasy community because it does give you a bit of like a reputation. Like I found it shocking that two of the YouTube reviews who were going through the game were like, Oh, like Jed Hearn is very well known in the self-publishing genre for fantasy. And I was like, (laughs) what? He I'm is. Not. What are you talking about? <laughs> he <doesn't know> that. <laughs> but it's literally just because you know you put a podcast out there enough um, and you make it decent, and yeah, you you do get a bit of that reputation. The other thing I did as well, which I'd love to mention, is I stole a tactic from M. L. Spencer, um, where when she was promoting Dragon Mage, which had like one of the best launches I think we've we've both seen in ages, um, she had a very short review. Uh, sorry, a very short email that she kind of sent out to me when she was like giving me details to promote the book. And then she had a link to a page on her website, which had like all the graphics there, all the details, like every possible question you might have as a person promoting this thing. I wish I was that smart. (laughs) And it was a really good tactic by her because it just meant that like, I wasn't having to bug her for details like, oh, what's the pricing on the audio book if I have also bought a Kindle book? Like it was also, it was always there on the page. Um, yeah. So that's like definitely a, a useful tactic to do as well. Plus I think it just comes a lot across a lot more professional if you don't have, you know, like this 600 word sprawling email that you're sending out to reviewers. And instead you can just say, great, like here's the page with all the details on my website. Um, and some people might worry like, oh, what if just general readers see that ahead of time? I set that up password protected so that it was only the reviewers who could get access to it, mm-hmm. um, which probably also has some benefits because it makes it feel like the reviewers are getting like a more exclusive thing as well. So yeah, yeah that is a uh, another tactic to consider. Yeah, that's cool. That's smart. I might steal that if I can ever get my shit together enough. <laughs> nice. What do your launches look like these days? Like, uh, uh, kind of like you, you, you took like a cherry pie and hurled it against a cinder block wall. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, is that blood? <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's just pie guts. And um, someone starts eating it, everyone screams. Yeah. So um, in a way they're good. They're better than they've ever been before. Like every book pre-sells more than the last one, which is insane to me. Um and basically what I do is the second uh, I have finished edits um, and put together a working uh, ebook arc, EPUB and Moby, um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the second I have that, uh, I just blast Facebook, Twitter, social media saying I have arcs uh, for this book. Uh, if you want one. If you're a reviewer and you want one, let me know. And uh, don't tell anyone, but literally anyone who messages me, if you can be bothered to message me and ask for one, you'll get one. Uh, Like, I don't care if you have a big site. 
Uh, I'm not going to check. I don't have time for that. Anyone, because it's just not going to hurt me. Yeah. There, I have people That's who it. are, they're not even reviewers. Like, I, I don't even know if they have like Goodreads accounts, but they'll be like, oh, cool. Can I have one? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So it just, they go to anybody. Yeah. Uh, and it seems to work. Um, so once arcs are out, uh, like I said before, I don't push people on dates for reviews. Uh, I tell them when release day is. I say, it'd be nice if some reviews dropped around release day. But, you know, like whatever's convenient for you. It's not like I'm paying these people. So exactly. I just want them to feel comfortable and happy and to understand that I really, really appreciate anything they do uh, because it's all awesome. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of releases for me. Uh, I'll usually do... Um, because I put a lot of, a lot of work, I put a, a lot of money into Felix. So he does a lot of work. Um, I, I like covers, so I'll, I'll do a cover reveal, uh, with someone either, uh, David over at FanFi Addict or FanFi Addict, whatever it is, uh, or, or Grimdark Magazine or something like that. Just to sort of, that's earlier on just to start building things. And so people can sort of see what it's going to look like, but I wanted to go back to arcs for a second. Um, sure. This week, somebody sent me an arc, uh, like a self-pub author, and I opened it up, and the formatting was just a disaster. Weird Ooh. spacing between, uh, like, words would be sort of separated out, like, they would the first letter separated from the rest of the word and stuff like that. Uh, and at first, bizarre. I was looking at it on my phone. I was like, ah, maybe it's my phone's just fucking this up. And then I opened it up uh, on the computer in um, Caliber, and no, it actually looked exactly the same. So... Kids, when you get your arc ready, yeah. open it up and look at it before you send it to someone. Like for sure, definitely. Like it, it's not it's a good me. Look. I'm nobody, and so I just messaged the guy. I was like, "Dude, this is totally fucked up. You fix this." And I sort of sent him a link to Caliber. I was like, "It's free. Use this. It'll set set you up. It'll do a really good job." Um, but like, you know, make sure make sure it's good before you start sending it out. And yes. don't do what I did. Yeah. With uh, one of my first books, I think I sent it out with some of the uh, the editing comments still on it or something because I did <laughs> oh, no. the wrong the wrong file. I'm like, oh, damn. Yes. <laughs> so you know, we all fuck up. That is the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, definitely check your formatting because, like, yeah, you you might only get one chance with some of the bigger reviewers, so you definitely don't want to lead with a bad impre- first impression for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How um how much before the launch date of the book are you generally sending out these arcs? Like how many months or weeks? Yeah, the goal for me is absolute dead minimum two months, but I'd like three months. Uh, yeah. I want people to have tons of time because most of these reviewers, they get a lot of books. Um, like I'm not even a reviewer and I get more books than I can read. Mm. So, I, you know, they are getting a lot of books. They do not have time to read all of them. Yep. Um, so that's part of why you need to be as absolutely polite and respectful as you possibly can is if you're an asshole, they're just not going to read your book. Um, and you want to give them lots of time to get to it. So yeah. it's, there's no stress for them. I totally agree with that. I, yeah, that was one thing I was, I was afraid of maybe miffing a bit with this launch because it was a month to go and I realized, Oh, hang on. Like <laughs> I've got, I should probably try to get some reviews for this thing. So that was like, definitely not what I would recommend timeline wise. I think, yeah, two months, yeah. three months, if you can do it. Um, cause yeah, obviously there's a temptation to like, you want to get the book out there cause you finished it and you're just sort of sitting on it and you like want people to see it. But like just having that patience to give them a few more months to make sure the launch is going to go really well and yep. there'll be some nice reviews. It, it yeah. pays off. Basically the day that I could publish the book, like I've got the cover art, it's edited. I could release it that day. That's when I upload it to Amazon and set a, a pre-release date for three months away. And nice. like, I don't set that date until the book's actually ready. But that, you know, you have to then have the patience to sort of like sit on a book that you could be selling for three months while the reviews kind of come in slowly and stuff. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's a very good approach. Because yeah, in the past, I've found myself like tweaking things in the book like right up until, you know, the launch week almost, <laughs> um, which is not good, not healthy at all. Um, and yeah. yeah, it does lead to like a lot of panicking because you worry, oh, am I going to 
accidentally delete a chapter or is something weird going to go on here? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, basically, uh, once once the arcs are ready, I don't look at it again. Um, I'm kind of done. Like by the time the release date comes around, my goal is to have most of the next book written. Yeah. You know, like first draft. Look at it. I definitely think that's important as well. Like if you just sit on a book for three months and wait for it to release and every day, like, yeah, Google, you know, is my, does my book have new reviews or whatever? Uh, and don't write anything new. You're going to just stress the heck out. Whereas oh, yeah. if you just move on to the next project, it's the best thing for you because by the time the book comes out, it feels like you don't even care about it anymore in a sense, which sounds maybe bad to say, but like, you know, because it was written a few months ago or whatever, and you're starting the next thing and you're like obsessing over the next project, it doesn't really like hurt you. If there's a bad review that comes out, if there's a good review, you're like, Oh cool. That was a thing that I did in the past. Um, yeah. and yeah, yeah it just means you can be a lot more healthier and objective approaching that. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if you, you waste those sort of three months, you know, searching reviews, Eh, you're, you're, it's a waste of time. You need to be yeah. moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you definitely can't stay too stationary when it comes to it in this game. Um, yeah, do we have any any last questions before we close up for this episode? This has been a good one. I've enjoyed this. Yeah, I, I think it's for an off the cuff. We didn't actually talk about it in <laughs> advance. Uh, no. That worked. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, th I think we're good. Uh, if other stuff comes up, we'll do another episode another day. Heck yeah. All right. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Uh, we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Yeah.